All right, so we're learning volume. We're learning how to measure volume. Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. See this object? Space in there. See this object? Space in there. See? Space. I'm looking at how much space an object takes up. So I have water. This, this, see this one? This is called a beaker. So is this. Beaker. Can you say beaker? B-E-A-K-E-R. Beaker. Beakers hold liquids but don't measure accurately. The tool to measure volume of a liquid accurately is called a graduated cylinder. These are graduated cylinders. This is a graduated cylinder. This is a graduated cylinder. They just look different. This one has a metal bottom and a white thing at the top. That's so that if it falls over, it doesn't hit the glass and break. This one has a base that comes off. If you have it standing, then I expect you to have a hand on it so that we can be safe and not lose the glass. But the red thing on it is also, so if it falls over, bam, it hits the red, not the glass. This is not some slider to help you measure volume. It stays at the top, so bam, it doesn't break. Okay, so we're gonna measure the volume of a liquid. See how much space this liquid takes up. And you can see that in here, it's a little bit above the 80, but these are very, these are estimations on this and we want exact amounts. So we're gonna pour some water into this graduated cylinder and we'll pour some water into this graduated cylinder. Okay, and if you look very closely, all right, so if you look closely, we're going to move in to the water and get really close right at the eye level of that water. You'll notice something. The water has curved. That is because the edge of the water is clinging to the sides of the container, and it has caused the water to curve. It looks like the level of the water is up here, but this is actually empty space. We have to look for the bottom of that curve. That curve is called the meniscus, and we're looking for the bottom of that curve right here. We don't want to be up here because that's not actually the level of water that we have. We need to be at the bottom of the curve. So if we measure that, you can see that this line is 20 and it goes all the way around the graduated cylinder. The next line is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and you'll see that line's a little bit longer. 26, 27, 28, 29 is where the bottom of that curve is. Now there is a little bit of space between the 29 line and the end of the curve so we could say 29.1 if we wanted to divide this into 10 pieces to be as accurate as we can but it's milliliters we're measuring in, milliliters. And if you ever forget, the top of the graduated cylinder will remind you what you're counting in with the ML, which stands for milliliters. That's because there's a thousand, remember milli, in a liter, milliliters. Now let's go back over to our other graduated cylinder and go ahead and zoom into that liquid. This graduated cylinder can be a little tricky because you'll notice you have a 60 here, but a 40 over here, and then you have a 50 and a 50, and then it goes from 40 and a 60. It's not really very confusing. You just need to think in my class, we're putting water in the graduated cylinder and filling it up. So the water goes in and we then have 20, we then have 30, 40, and then 50, and then if we would have 60. We're not quite at 60, so we can begin to figure out exactly how much water there is. Again, here's my 50 line, 51, 52, 53, 54. Again, 55 is a little bit longer. Then I have 56. Now I want the bottom of that curve again. So it's very, very important that you don't go up to the top of the water. You have to go to the bottom of that curve. You have to get your eyes all the way down there, and you're, it's almost like you're looking through the bottom of the top. Very kind of weird, but it's the bottom of the curve. So this would be 57 milliliters of water. And remember, we're measuring volume, the amount of space the object takes up. The key is you have to look at the bottom of that meniscus, so this one has 57 milliliters of water.